Hey you guys, how's it going? Kyle, or Epic here, with another tutorial for you guys on some cool stuff with Photoshop. A lot of you guys have seen my latest photography with sequence action photography, or action sequence photography. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Basically what it is, is it's taking a bunch of photos that look like these here. We have a sequence, some of somebody doing some kind of movement or motion. And you turn it into a big photo, one photo, instead of multiple images, and you have every photo in one image. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Real quick, it's important to keep in mind that you, I recommend putting your camera on a tripod or some type of steady surface that's not going to have a lot of movement because you want the lines like this lamppost here, this lamppost there, the colors and the way this is you know put, you want it all to line up equally within each photo because you're not always going to get that easy to edit sky background. So if you have things going on in the background that you need to use, whatever, take that in consideration, especially if there's motion going on in the background because that stuff's going to be very challenging to edit. And obviously you need a camera that shoots at, you know, a bunch of frames a second. With nothing more to do, let's get started. I'm using Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, CS6 extended. Um, I recommend using CS5.5 or higher. Although I don't know, I guess all you really need to make sure is that your Photoshop has the mask tools. Um, and the edit auto align feature here and the auto blend. Auto blend I don't recommend but auto align you'll definitely need. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit control O to open. Click the first image in your sequence and then hold shift and click the last image in your sequence and that's gonna select all of them. Hit enter and it's gonna open them all up in order as long as the image numbers are in order. And then once they're all open, you're going to alternate through them by using control tab. Control tab goes forward, control shift tab brings you backwards. So keep that in mind as you're going through this. And what you're going to do is you're going to take all these images and these other tabs and you're going to put them all in this first tab image right here. So each photo is going to be its own individual layer in this one project, which is going to be your very first image. So hold control the entire time you do this option. So I'm going to give you the hotkeys real fast. So while holding control, you're going to hit tab, A, C, F4, and V. All right. All that just to take that second image and put it in here. So what that does is control tab takes you to the next photo in line. Control A is going to highlight the photo. Control C is going to copy that image. Control F4 is going to close that tab and bring you back to the one before it, which is one that should, that should have all the layers. And then control V is going to copy it there. And you're going to repeat this step until you have all the photos on the same project with each photo as its own individual layer. Once you're done, you should have all the photos as their own layers here on the side. And then this is where that auto align feature comes in handy. So you're going to select this bottom one. I usually make it its own layer. I don't really know how important that is. I just think it's important just to do it just because if I need to edit it I can and even if your shot is on a tripod and these edges kind of all align up here they might not whenever you finish them so it's always good to make sure you auto align them just in case to make sure that the lines the shapes and the colors all kind of match up evenly so click that bottom layer scroll up hold shift and click that top layer that's going to select all of your layers so it can read each each image that you select and just go edit auto align make sure auto is selected and when you click OK, it's going to do exactly what I mentioned before. Let it render, and let's see what happens. All right, so now that's done, if you look kind of closely, you can kind of see that there are some dotted edges around the sides. And that's because there was some slight camera motion. And even if you go through and deselect each one, the, the dotted lines and the edges will get more and more you know, thicker and more precise, and you'll start to see the big details. So. The way I fix that is I make sure every, every layer is visible and I use the crop tool because otherwise whenever you go through and edit each individual image you'll have to highlight the outer edges as well as the you know you and the, the photo and it's just a, it's a big hassle and sometimes things going on if there's mo motion or movement in the background it's, it's hard to edit that stuff out so I just use the crop tool. So make sure each individual layer is selected, I don't know how important that is and just kind of drag the crop tool to where it's uh, just a couple pixels in. Pixels in and make sure that the dotted lines aren't within the image and then when you're done hit enter and then you have your new cropped region 
Now here's the fun part. This is probably the most time consuming part, so I'm going to go through it and make it sound easy. But it's going to take time and it will take consistency, but if you stick with it, just for, always remember yourself that someone somewhere is going to see this and go, wow, that is so cool. So take your points. You're going to have this bottom layer as your main background layer. If you do that auto align feature, you're going to have all these images perfectly aligned. The shapes and stuff should all be fine. If you can make sure and double check by making each layer visible as it goes, and you see the lamp post it should light, light up already. It shouldn't look like it moves or anything like that. The lines and colors shouldn't move too much. Trees are going to be a big lifesaver, so don't stress too much about those. So, speaking of the time consuming part, you're going to select that second layer, make it visible, and you're going to use the mask tool. Now, some people have this default thing where they automatically have the mass areas selected. I usually have the selected areas. That way, it's good to go. You guys can kind of do it however you want to as long as you are selecting this area. So you enter the mask by either hitting Q or you can click this little guy here. It's a little square with a circle inside it. And then you select the brush tool. Hit B for brush. Size and hardness doesn't matter too much. And you don't have to worry about details. You don't have to get too close and crazy and get like just in the perfect edges. All you need to focus on is just highlighting the majority of you and you can get around you. I recommend doing bringing the hardness up all the way so you know exactly what regions of your body or your character or whoever's in motion selected. That way when you, you know, if you when you're doing like the whole editing process, you don't have like a slightly faded missing finger or slightly faded missing hand or arm or things like that. So just keep that in mind. Once you have your whole area selected, hit Q to exit, and then hit Control Shift I. Or if you have the mass area selected, then it should automatically have the outer dotted areas, the outer edges to be dotted, which means that the entire play page is selected except for you, which is what you want because you're going to delete everything on that image except for you, and you're going to come out with the image looking like this. And for tips, you just hit Control D to deselect. And you repeat that same process for each and every image. Oh, real quick, a pro tip. If you have like issues like this here where you have these little triangle spots, you can go through and bring your like size down, your hardness down, and go through all that trouble. But I find it easier to kind of use the lasso tool. Make sure your feather is at zero pixels because if you have your feather option where it has like faded like 10 pixels or so, then it might not select the area because of the feather. So keep it zero. And don't select like on the color of like your body just select the majority of the area you're trying to, to delete and then once you have the majority of the area selected hit delete and then control D to deselect and then use the eraser to kind of go in that way all you got to focus on is just those edges and then that'll make it look a lot better a lot smoother and save you just a little bit more time that way you don't have to go through and erase too much with like a super small mouse All right, so I'm pretty much done with this first part. I'm gonna hit Control Zero to zoom out to the majority of the photo, and this is kind of what it looks out, you know, looks like zoomed out. Uh, if you want to review your actual pixels in Photoshop, hit Control Alt Zero, and then hit H to select the hand. Then you can kind of drag your image around and maintain. These are all like the actual pixels, actual size, and then you just do that. 
very thing for all the photos and however precise you get into here is totally up to you guys now when I first did my original edit I took a lot longer time and for this tutorial sake I'm half-assing it a little bit but what I'm gonna do now is kinda go through and do each and every individual image and then we'll finish the tutorial from there and one nifty funky kinda thing here is you gotta pick your sequences so if you look on this first one here in the beginning and also the end you have like these bunches of photos you can kind of take those out. So, for example, if I take out this image here, I have this. But if I keep it, it looks like that. Or I can go from that to this here. So you gotta like go through and watch with like the the ones that you choose. You can keep them all, or you can take out certain ones. I like to take out this one because it looks more like a, a better sequence. I mean, it's obviously that to jump, I would squat it down and go out. So there's things like that you can take into consideration, even with the ending ones here. Like this one doesn't look like it's too neat, so I could just stick with that. So you'll see that there's there's some images that you can kind of take out and still get the full effect of the photo. So most people don't pay too much attention to the beginning of the sequence. They mostly take you know attention to the variation of this of the sequence. And that's pretty much how you do that. Once you're done, you just select all the images and then highlight the um, bottom one, highlight the top one, hit Control E to merge them all together. And then uh, instead of just doing Control S to save it, I go through a specific sequence where I hit Control Shift. A on oh no, a control shift alt s and then this window will pop up and you get to kind of go through some specifications and then it's a nice way to kind of keep the exact same quality and the exact same uh, size of the photo but kind of compress it to where it doesn't take up as much space and you can do it by this maximum thing here choose a file type you can choose to take off the metadata here you can choose an image size change the percent and then you can kind of scroll through and see the differences here and it doesn't look too much different so if you see the original image is 68 megabytes but the finished image if I, if I like you know compress it goes down to 9 megabytes or almost 10 megabits so if you do that you can kind of see the difference in the, the sizes and the quality still looks basically the same everything still looks just as great so then you save it in a folder that you want to and then you edit it either in Photoshop where you won't have to do this until you're done editing it or you open it up in Lightroom and then edit it that way. All in all, that's basically how I do the action sequence photography. It's a lot easier than it looks. It's pretty simple. All it is is just doing the details. And then, like I showed you guys before, you can do a lot of really cool pictures. So, for example, I'll show you again, you can get shots like this here where you have the Tic Tac the Cats. You can do sequence shots like this side flip here of Andrew going over the pyramid. And you can do sequence shots like here. We have Loki doing the tic tac to cat on that spot. A lot of really cool stuff. So that's the tutorial for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next week, hopefully, I will have a movement tutorial and not just a Photoshop tutorial. But I figured some of you guys are actually really appreciating some of my photography skills and editing. So figured I'd kind of give you guys another insight besides some of you guys are wanting some Photoshop tutorials anyway so and feel free to post on my Facebook fan page the photos that you take using this technique I hope it teaches you guys a lot I hope it helped you guys I hope you guys learn any shortcuts any shortcuts that I use for keyboard shortcuts and stuff I'll put in the description so you guys know what they do what they are and yeah I would love to see what you guys come up with so please 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 Throw them down on my Facebook fan page so I can see what you guys come up with. Yeah. So, take care, you guys. See you guys next week.